Welcome to the AI for Good Global Summit here in Geneva on day one. And of course, that means we should be speaking to the real specialists about AI. And one of them is here right now, Professor Muller from Berlin University, who deals with machine learning. What is that? Well, in machine learning, you teach machines um, to predict from data. And so, for example, you could think of having teaching a machine to diagnose cancer as opposed to non-cancer. And um, then, you know, hopefully this will be a good uh, support for a medical doctor who has this, this task to fulfill. Uh, and what brings you here for this well, week? Um, first of all, I, I, yesterday I organized a workshop with 10 uh, AI specialists from all around the globe. And we discussed the newest advances and, and this was a very interesting day uh, for the specialists. And today I will talk about um, how to make big neural networks transparent. Basically, when we talk about AI for good, wh what do you see in terms of good? Well, I mean, I, I work, um, my, my focus is mainly on machine learning for the sciences. So, like medical sciences where you help diagnosing, where you um, try to contribute to the mechanisms that underlie cancer, that where you study quantum physics in order to find new materials. I think that's all in the direction of good. Where are we now in the evolution of AI? Is this just really just the very, very, very beginning? Yes, you're, you're very right. So a lot of people nowadays say, yeah, and then we apply AI, as if there was something you know, that you can take from the shelf and just apply it. And that's, of course, complete nonsense. It's a field that is growing, that is in, in infancy, and a lot of wonderful breakthroughs are yet to be made. And yet, if you look back, I mean, AI was talked about even in the 40s and 50s. Yes. Um, there, there was actually um, a long history of classical AI um, where people uh, thought that using logics and um, these type of techniques, you could actually explain the world and make machines intelligent. And it turned out in the last decades that it's much better and much more useful um, to have statistical learning algorithms. And basically they're in all our, you know, they're in, in your phone and my phone. It's, it's basically in our lives. AI. Though, on the one hand, are we, should we be scared of AI or not? Because it's, we're talking about big data, we're talking about everything about you, everything about me being shared and used. I think we have a pivotal moment in time. So I think um, right now, a lot of us are scared, right? And you know, it's, it's not that we, you know, we have to keep things as they are. We are, we are citizens, we can think how we want our world to be. And I think one of the points in this meeting is to, to discuss how our world should be. And then, then there's also the technology people that can think of new algorithms and new mathematics in order to support this. Is AI, just like green technology, you know, competition between Europe, the Chinese, and the Americans, so who can be advanced in new green, green technology, is AI also something which continents are battling over to have supremacy or is it something that needs to be shared worldwide? I think both are happening at the same time. Um, I think in the, the scientific community is through all the centuries has been competing and collaborating and uh, all the great successes were always standing on people's shoulders and the same applies to AI. There's nothing special in this respect but of course AI is very instrumental for the um, progress of our countries. So I think we need to have the, the people, the, the right minds, we have to educate the right minds, we have to have the right infrastructure, we have to have the, the correct amount of research funding to, to contribute to the fundamentals of AI because these fundamentals, they are very close to an application. 
it's not like in engineering where you take 10 years until mm. something gets to into, into a car after you made an invention. It's rather that this takes half a year. And even in some companies it takes 10 days. So, so I think it's very agile world. But coming back to this, you know, to the European view, I think all of us, we would like to have a world where privacy is respected. So we, we want our data to be respected. And I think it's time for having new methods that actually respect the privacy. And there's a lot of new legislation to be done and regulation to be done. But on the other side, there's a lot of new science to be done to make it really practical. And because in the end, we don't want to kill new enterprises. On the contrary, we would like to have, you know, privately respectful AI as a European contribution to the world. That's Professor Müller from Berlin University. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. <laughs> okay, very good.